up guys again we are back question 7 says find the values of k for which this equation has equal roots now let me remind you that we are dealing with a quadratic because you have x squared you have x and you have a constant term now in a quadratic you could have three types of roots real roots complex roots or equal roots and that all depends on the guy we call the discriminant d capital d equals p squared minus 4ac and in the case of the of, a, of equal roots you want capital d to be zero so equal zero now your b is that so this is a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero so your b is the guy in front of x and that is minus k so minus k squared minus 4 a c what is our a a is the guy in front of x squared in this case 2k minus 3 is our a so 2k minus 3 and what is our c the, the constant term k minus 1 and we want all of that to be equal to 0 so if we are solving for k we simply need to solve this quadratic uh, I mean we need to solve this quadratic in k so can we expand properly and then begin to dish up stuff let's expand so you all know how to use the expand the foil method or any of the methods so I'm just going to quickly do this one this is k squared and that's minus 4 into 2k times k is 2k squared 2k times minus 1 is negative 2k negative 3 times k is negative 3k that gives negative 5k negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3 if I open up this bracket with a minus 4 multiplying everything here I have k squared minus hk squared plus 20k now do not ever be in a hurry to the extent of making a mistake with negative times negative it's very important and in this case minus 12 equals 0 so all I have left is my negative 7k squared plus 20k minus 12 equals 0 and because it's equal 0 I can multiply both sides by negative so that that becomes positive k positive 7kx k squared so that becomes 7k squared negative 20k positive 12 equals 0 and again you come across the same problem we have been dealing with how do we factorize this quadratic so I think if you have your own trick stick to it because this kind of thing would keep coming up in the, in, in the exam like you need to always factorize and make sure you have a short method that always works in my own case I would still tell you that this is M A M so mom right mom I need two numbers the multiply to give whatever this two would multiply to give and add to give whatever that would add to give so I need two numbers the multiply to give 84 and add up to give negative 20 what two numbers can you think of now sometimes it becomes really really uh, complicated so I'm going to try to divide this by 6 and I found out very quickly that negative 16 and negative 4 would just do it now if you can always be quick with that then it will save you a lot otherwise on your calculators you should be able to find a factorization function there a quadratic function so if you go on um, mode and then you click on you know functions or algebra you would find a way to do this practice okay whatever trick you have stick to it so the two numbers are minus 16 and minus 4 I don't know where the 7k would be so I'm going to put 7k on both sides and wait to see which one can be um, <coughs> factorized <coughs> okay so it appears that none of either can be factorized so what do you reckon 
happens at this point? Did we do anything wrong? No. So what do you think would happen at this point? Was it 16 and 4? 16 times 8. 16 times 4. Okay, so I was wrong to have used. It was not 16 and 4. 84 divided by 6. It was 14. So it was 14 and 6, not 16 and 4. So I made that mistake. I don't know why it happened. But the number should be 14 and 6, not 16 and 4. That was why nothing was going to factorize. I was scared. Alright, so this is the one that can get factorized. And what goes out never comes back. And it looks like 7 is going out. So when 7 goes out, you're left with k minus 2. So that's k minus 2, 7k minus 6 equals 0. And therefore, k equals 2 or k equals 6 over 7. Now that tells us the solution is k equals 2 or k equals 6 over 7. So remember to always knock this off. Otherwise, the examiner would be confused of which one you are sticking to. Funny enough, funny enough, you notice that because you're only trying to solve for k, even if you are stuck with 7k minus 14 is a solution, you'll find out that k would still be 2, because 14 over 7 is just 2. Alright. Okay. Alright, the next question is question um, 8a which says given that u equals 2 to the x write the expression for du dx now when you have questions like this do not get too worried um, it's only about implicit differentiation or you could just make um, x the subject so I would rather make x the subject so I have u equals 2 to the x. And to make x the subject, may I take lean of both sides? So lean u equals lean 2 to the x. And you know the thing with logarithm is that whenever you have a power there, it goes to the front. It goes as a coefficient. So let this x go there. So we have lean u equals x lean 2. And with that, I can say x equals 1 over lean 2, and then we have lean u. So if I am to differentiate now dx du, my factor, my coefficient stays the same. It doesn't get differentiated. It's still there. But what's the derivative of lean u, of lean? It's just 1 over, so it's going to be 1 over u. And we know that u is 2 to the x, so therefore, the x du is 1 over u lin x, which is 1 over 2 to the x lin x. But we are looking for du over dx, so du dx is the reciprocal of the other side, which is also that. And there you have it. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. That is not x, that is 2. Why did I do that? So that was 2, and that stays as 2. I'm sure you must have been wondering, how did he change 2 to x? Well, that's my mistake. <coughs> Alright. Question 8b then says, find the exact value of integral from 0 to 1 of 2 to the x root 3 plus 2 to the x. Now, this is leading from that question because now we know what the derivative of 2 to the x is. So if we ever have to use integration by substitution or anything, we should know what to do. Now, it's 6 marks. It says find the exact value of integral of that. Now, the first thing you may want to do is to use integration by substitution. I mean, you could think of integration by part, but would it ever get simplified further? No. So, using integration by substitution, what do we want to substitute? So, the question is to integrate from 0 to 1 of 2 to the x root 3 plus 2 to the x dx. Let us in, let's substitute for 3 plus 2 to the x. Let a equals 3 plus 2 to the x 
dA dx would therefore be the derivative of 3, which is 0, plus derivative of 2 to the x, which we already said is 2 to the x lean 2. Now, therefore, dx is simply, in terms of dA, your dx is going to be dA over 2 to the x lean 2. Now, we are going to replace for 3 plus 2x there, and we're also going to replace for dx there. So the question now becomes integral from 0 to 1. Of course, these are values of x, not values of a. But that becomes 2 to the x. Instead of root 3 plus 2x, it will be root a, which is a to the half. And instead of dx, it's going to be dA over 2 to the x lean 2. Now, the good news is that 2 to the x, we should not have been there, because you shouldn't be having an x again when you have changed everything to a. The good news is that this guy cancels that guy, and lean 2 can wait outside for us. So we now have, so this can be rewritten as lean 1 over lean 2, integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1, okay, a to the half. And when you integrate a to the half, you get a to the half, you add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So when you add 1 to half, you get 3 over 2, right, or 1.5. So that is a to the 3 over 2 divided by the new power, and don't forget, you still have 1 over lean 2 there, and you need to substitute for when x is 0 to when x is 1. We will take everything to normal, to, to, you know, to write everything normally now. So the 3 over 2 at the bottom becomes 2 over 3. So that's 2 over 3 lean 2, and you have a to the power 3 over 2, but a is root, is just 3 plus 2x. To, um, 3 plus 2 to the x. So from when x was 0 to when x was 1. Uh, sorry, I forgot to put my 3 over 2 power there. So there is still a power outside all of that. 3 over 2. Okay. So let's see what happens when x is a 0. When x is 0, that's just 1, right? So you have 3 plus 1, all to the power 3 over 2. When x is a 1, what you have there is 2 to the power 1, which is 2. So you have 3 plus 2, which is 5. So I end up with 2 over 3 lean 2 outside. Then I have 5 to the power 3 over 2 minus 4 to the power 3 over 2. And that is my final answer because they want us to have the, to leave them with the exact values. So there might be no point going further. Or well, there might be because we can actually find the, squ the squares of 4, which is 2, and raise it to the power 3, which is 8. But we cannot find the squares of 5 and raise it to power 3, so that would be it. Alright, I would um, move to question 9, which has to do with a fractional algebra in the next video. So in the next video, we'll continue with question 9. Just stay tuned, okay? Cheers.